I'd like to take this opportunity to personally thank Ronaldinho, one of my personal favorite players growing up as a kid, for the countless no-look passes that I made during my childhood. Totally unnecessary, but totally because of you. What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Nike Lunar Legend X7 Pro 10R indoor and turf shoes in both the Barcelona as well as the Milan colorways. Formerly known as the Nike Tiempo X Finale, which admittedly is a much easier name to remember, Nike has now introduced these 10R variations which are inspired by Ronaldinho's final signature model with the brand, the Ronaldinho Dois, of course featuring that signature quilted leather their upper that looks absolutely fantastic along with other styling cues of course that we'll go over in today's video. Not only is the styling on point in my opinion, the quality and value for money perspective that these are as far as an indoor or turf shoe is concerned is pretty ridiculous and with all of that combined I'd go as far as to say that these are now my personal favorite indoor and turf boots currently on the market and they are far from being the most expensive ones which is kind of surprising so if you want to learn more about what these things are all about including how they fit and feel on feet please stick around and watch the entire video and if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below that'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $105 retail price in either the white or the red in both the indoor and turf variations. If you guys do end up enjoying the video, don't forget to support it with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time and enjoying what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. For those wondering about extras, nothing comes included with the shoes aside from the box. But if you buy two pairs, you'll get two boxes. Let's start with the white pair that represents Ronaldinho's time well at Barcelona. Now, I think these are really cool for three different reasons. One, because white and gold always looks really good. Two, because white and gold was kind of a signature color combo for Ronaldinho throughout his entire career, no matter which boots he was wearing. And then three, this is more or less a direct remake of an actual colorway that we got of the Ronaldinho Doi signature model, which this is, of course, inspired by. So this shoe, as you can see, is pretty much all white white leather, white stitching, white embroidery, the back part which has a mesh base with a fuse on top that's solid white in color, that's white, white liner, white laces, and then of course the midsole and outsole solid white as well. And you even have a very light color for the suede wrapping around the toe box, forefoot and midfoot area, bordering the upper and the midsole. So if you're wondering how hard are these gonna be to keep clean, very, very hard. I would suggest if you wanna keep them as white as possible, buy the shoes and never take them out of the box. That's pretty much the only way these things are gonna stay clean because if you wear them, they are going to get dirty, they are going to have stains and stitching, especially given that there is so much on the upper of the shoe, is pretty much impossible to clean or at least make pure white again. So if you're buying the shoe with the expectation that they are going to look like brand new as long as you have them, that unfortunately is going to be very, very difficult to maintain. Now, as far as accent colors you're gonna find, you have a gold tongue, which I really like the look of, the gold swoosh, and given the design of the current generation of Tiempo, just like the Ronaldinho Dois, the swoosh can be a little bit further back, which was kind of the case on that particular shoe as well. Love the way that looks. They even added this little leather strip on top to kind of hold the top part of the swoosh. That was a signature element on a lot of Ronaldinho's signature shoes. Love the way that looks. It even has the three color stitching here on the lateral side of the shoe, the red, orange, and yellow, which we also got on a lot of his signature models. The Tiempo X branding in gold, one more gold swoosh there on the opposite side. And then on the insole, which is non-removable as you can see, does have the Ronaldinho signature kind of goal celebration or just happy logo uh, in general. He'd always do that with his hands. I just did it wrong, but you guys have seen that. If you're a fan of Ronaldinho, know exactly what that symbol is. Overall, really good looking colorway. I have nothing bad to say about these. The red ones, of course, represent his time at AC Milan and look equally as good in my opinion. While this isn't an original colorway, it still looks really, really good. Pretty much all red with some black accents throughout. So red upper, red stitching, red embroidery, laces, midsole, even the outsole is solid red in color, whether you go for the indoor or turf variation of the shoe, this being the turf version. But something you'll immediately notice as different between the two shoes that I'm showing you in this video is that this doesn't have the suede wrapping around the toe like the white pair does. And that's because this is the indoor variation 
both colorways of the indoor version have that extra suede, even if you buy the red one, but if you buy the turf version, it doesn't have that extra suede wrapping around the bottom, even if you go for the white colorway, so keep that in mind. The swoosh, of course, black in color on either side. You have some gold Tiempo X branding on the back, which I think is a cool little detail with the red accent. You can see the nylon straps that stick out at the top three lacing positions. Those are black in color as well, just for a little bit of extra accent. And then of course that added little element right there and the three color stitching. Again, to make this a Ronaldinho signature colorway, Love the way these look. If I had to pick a favorite between the two, I definitely lean more towards the white ones just because I'm such a big fan of white and gold boots. But let me know which ones you guys think are better down below in the comments. Even better yet, I'll leave a little pop-up poll on the corner of the screen and you can vote. Do you like the red ones or do you like the white ones more? Curious to hear what your opinions are. Before we move on, there's also a few other details inside the shoe, like this saying in Portuguese, under the tongue. Not sure exactly what it says, but if you wanna translate, feel free to down below in the comments. And then inside the boots, basically where the heel liner ends, you're gonna find this little strip of yellow and green material that features a number 10 print, which was a signature print, again, on Ronaldinho's signature model. So this has nothing to do with performance, has nothing to do with comfort, it's just there as an added signature element, which again, I think is a really cool little detail that Nike absolutely did not need to add, but they did, because they wanted to do these right. As far as performance and quality is concerned, these are really good considering the $105 retail price. Now it must be noted that a regular variation of the Tiempo X Finale, the non 10R version does retail for $95. So it's $10 less expensive, but I honestly feel as good as that regular version is, that these are worth the extra $10 based on the quality improvements, especially in regards to the leather. These feature a calfskin leather upper that to me, just feel that much nicer than what you get on the regular variation of the shoe. Of course, it's all quilted stitching, so it's a little bit more traditional in regards to how it feels and fits on your feet, given that this does not have an internal support cage like you'd find on the regular variations of pretty much all the Tiempos. So that's a little bit different, and if you like something that perhaps has a slightly more responsive locked-in sensation, maybe the regular variation is the way to go, but if you're just after that soft leather natural sensation that a Ronaldinho signature model would have provided or just a good quality leather shoe should provide, you're not gonna have any issues with the responsiveness of this particular shoe. The stitching for the most part does a pretty good job of holding your foot in place and not overstretching. I'm sure they accounted for that when they designed that this particular shoe. As far as the leather is concerned, it's got really good thickness to it. It's not overly thin. It's got a nice padded sensation to it. And of course, there's a good amount of leather on this shoe as well. Pretty much spans the entire forefoot and most of the midfoot area as well which is pretty much all the parts of the shoe that you would want to be leather unfortunately the tongue is not made of leather and something that's kind of interesting is that the tongue seems to be a little bit of a different material on the red pair versus the uh, uh, white pair where the red pair is actually a little bit nicer it's a slightly softer synthetic type material but either way it's not really a big deal both of course feature a central lacing system that would be a little bit different than what we found on that original run with Neo Dois but again they kind of just blended the design of the new Tiempo and the old Ronaldinho's into one shoe here. And something that does carry over from the regular Tiempo's is of course the nylon straps that you have at the top three lacing positions on both the lateral and medial side. Basically a flywire cable that's not a thin flywire cable. It runs through the lining material into the base of the sole, connecting directly to that lacing system. So when you tie the laces tight, it really does a good job of locking the midfoot and your heel in place, making for an overall more responsive locked in sensation. The rear of the shoe, unlike of course the top end Tiempo Legend, which they do not make of this Ronaldinho signature model, it's not fly knit, instead it's just a mesh base with fuse on top. Honestly, it's not really a big aspect of the shoe in regards to how it feels. I have no issues with what they've done here. And of course the shoes are both low cut as they should be and as all the Tiempos are anyways. At the back of the shoe, you'll find that it does feature an internal plastic heel counter, which is pretty standard these days. A synthetic leather liner with a decent amount of padding, nothing really too fancy about it whatsoever. And then the insole, which is just a regular foam with a mesh liner on top, but it is fully glued in and glued in enough to where it would be very, very difficult to remove. So at $110, personally, I would like to see the insole be removable. I'm not sure why they didn't do it on this particular model, but in my opinion, at the same time, I really don't think it's a deal breaker. I think the overall quality of the shoe, even with a glued in insole, is still a very, very good value. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can get either the white or red ones in both indoor or turf variations, where the indoor version has the suede wrapping around the toe box, forefoot, and midfoot area, 
where the turf variation, which I have here in red, does not feature that same suede. Just something to note if you are planning on picking these up, because I know it will be a little bit confusing to certain people. Something that does not change whether you go indoor or turf is the midsole, which features Lunar Lawn foam. The entire thing isn't Lunar Lawn. This outside material is actually a more dense foam for the sake of stability, but there are Lunar Lawn inserts in the heel as well as in the forefoot area. And you can see, it's hard to tell at this particular shoe because it's all white on white. This center part allows you to feel the Lunar Lawn and then this outside material before it turns into rubber is actually the more dense foam that you'll find on the outside of the midsole as well. It's got decent thickness to it and really, really good underfoot cushioning. I would say that these are well above average in regards to just general cushioning underfoot in comparison to most other indoors. They're not overly high off the ground if that's something that you're concerned about. They still feel fairly low profile, but you get very good underfoot cushioning, which to me is something that I really value in a pair of indoors. But ultimately, that's something that also really comes down to personal preference. The indoor version looks like this with this very interesting mapped out pattern here across the bottom. It's really good quality rubber and it's actually very good in regards to traction as long as you're on a relatively clean court. And even if you're on concrete and outdoor surface playing street soccer, the traction and overall durability is also really good. It does also feature a lip that extends in rubber around the forefoot and toe box area, again, for the sake of durability. So from a traction and durability standpoint, I would say this as an indoor shoe is a very solid option. The turf version utilizes the exact same rubber for the outsole, but of course it has a completely different traction pattern. Now turf shoes, are designed for that rough carpet type material that you would generally find on an indoor turf plane surface. Rarely do they have this outside anymore. Uh, and that's really what this is made for in regards to having proper traction. You can also use this type of a layout on artificial grass as well, which is a deeper surface with the rubber pellets, but the traction won't be as aggressive as something like a true AG stud pattern would provide that actually has studs. These have more of like small little nubs. And in my experience with pretty much a bunch of different turf shoes, all of these turf stud patterns pretty much perform the same in regards to grip, which is relatively well on a turf surface. So you're unlikely to have any issues with the traction here. Whether or not you wanna use these on artificial grass, again, that depends on what your preferences are and what you're comfortable with in regards to having more or less grip, because this definitely will have less grip on artificial grass versus a true AG stud pattern, but it definitely gets the job done. It also has the rubber lip around the edge, just like the indoor variation for the sake of durability. And again, it's a really, really good turf layout. As far as weight is concerned, there is a bit of a difference between the indoor and turf versions of the shoe, although I wouldn't say that it's overly significant. The indoor version in a size 9.5 US weighs in at pretty much nine ounces exactly, whereas the turf version of the shoe, also in a size 9.5 US, weighs in at 9.5 ounces, so half an ounce more for the turf variation, and that's simply because there's more rubber to the outsole versus the indoor version, just because you have to have those rubber nubs. That's gonna add a little bit of weight. I wouldn't think that weight is the deciding factor here because they're made for two completely different playing surfaces. But as far as the overall feel is concerned, I think if you're interested in a shoe like this, nine ounces is not going to scare you away. And as far as just the feel on feet is concerned, honestly, these do not feel heavy at all. They feel like good quality leather shoes with decent underfoot cushioning, and they're very, very comfortable, which I think is what you should be looking for from this style of shoe. So as you can see, I swapped out the stock white laces, which look great by the way, for some gold metallic SR4U replacement laces, which look 10 times better. When you have a gold accent tongue like this with a white shoe, the laces need to match that. It makes the shoe look so much nicer in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Everyone's entitled to their own. If you are interested though in some SR4U replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, these feel and look absolutely fantastic. It's a good quality calfskin leather upper that feels nice and soft. Got a good amount of padding to it as well, but of course they're also leather shoes, so they're gonna require a little bit of break-in time. After a single wear, you'll notice that they'll soften up significantly, and after a couple of wears, they'll mold to the exact shape of your foot. Kind of a signature of leather shoes in general. It's why so many people, including myself, really prefer leather over any other material when it comes to soccer cleats or indoor soccer shoes in this particular instance. The underfoot cushioning from the Lunar is really, really nice as well. Good traction from the indoor bottom on an indoor court, which I am not on right now. And again, the shoe 
fits and feels really, really nice. Width-wise, it's got the same general shape as the rest of the current generation of Tiempos. Good width to them. I would say that these are gonna fit just about anybody, especially after a little bit of break-in time. And as far as sizing is concerned, just like the other Tiempos as well, they run about a half size small. So I went up a half size to a 9.5 US rather than my usual size nine in order to achieve the best possible fit. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. Here's just a quick look at the turf version in red and black. They look absolutely fantastic. That's the main thing that I wanted to show you guys. And as far as advice is concerned in regards to fit, feel, and sizing, everything I said about the indoor version applies to the turf version as well. Despite having the turf bottom rather than the indoor outsole, it feels pretty much the same. The fit is the same, the shape is the same. And even not having that suede around the toe does not change the overall fit or feel of the shoe whatsoever. So whether you're going turf or indoor, all the same advice applies. In conclusion, I don't really have too much negative to say about these things. I think for the $105 price point, given the quality, the amount of leather, the comfort, the Lunar Lawn cushioning setup, a solid indoor or turf setup, depending on what you need, and, and a shoe that looks as good as these do, I don't think that $105 is unreasonable at all. And for all of those reasons, this is now my personal favorite indoor and turf shoes. These will be my go-tos when I'm not testing anything out. And I think if you're just on the market for good quality leather, indoor, or turf shoes, this should be near the top of your list of shoes to consider. Anyways, guys, that is it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. You'll be able to pick these up below their normal $105 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching.